Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, try the problem on your own. Let's start by reading this problem to set up what's happening. Caitlin has a movie rental card with $175. So she already has $175 on her card. And then what happens? After she rents her first movie, the card's value decreases to 172.5. All right, so I'm going to make a little table down here already to set up a table where we have, let's say, the money that we have on the card. Well, actually, sorry, let's look at the values they give us. Um, a sub A of N, excuse me, is the amount of money on the rental card. So let's call the output A of N. That's the amount of money on the card. And N, the number of movies you rent, because the amount of movies you rent alters the amount of money you have in your card. With zero movies rented, she had $175. With one movie rented, she had 172.25, I think. Yes, let me check. Yes, and then uh, second movie, 169.50. And then I think they give us a third movie. The third movie is 166.75 left in the card. All right, so let's see if this thing is linear. Let's see what the price uh, if the price of a movie is constant. And we're just going to find our differences there. So what is 175 minus 172? 0.25, right? What is that? It's about $2.75. Okay. And then 172.25 minus 169.5. It's also 275. And then lastly, 169.5 minus 166.75. That's also, oops, 169.5. Oops. Oh boy, minus 166.75, that equals 275 as well. Okay, so the slope here is always decreasing by 275. So in other words, every movie she rents cost 275. Okay, so going up here, uh, that means uh, the equation I would write is you start at 175 and then you take away two dollars and seventy five cents per movie and that equals the total you have and what you can do is just try to plug in several values to your equation always check that it works so for example if I plug in one not the best value to plug in so early on but try a couple you would see that this would equal 175 minus 275 which is 172.5 and what you're testing when you're doing this, uh, you're testing different n values to see if it gets you the right cost. So in this case, the most extensive testing you can really do is test 0, 1, 2, and 3 to see that the formula actually works. In other words, if you plug in these n values, make sure that you actually get the correct outputs. Now let's look at the second part of the question. Caitlin rents a movie every Friday. How many weeks in a row can she afford to rent a movie until using her rental card only? I think the best way to set this up is to say you have 175, right, minus two dollars and seventy-five cents per movie. Um, at what number of weeks will this equal zero? Right, n is the number of movies, but it's also the number of weeks because every one movie she rents is another week. So if we find when this equals zero, that will tell us the number of movies it takes to get the car down to zero before it really costs something. So I would add 275 n to both sides. That's the way I would start this. Then we have $2.75 n equals 175. And we divide both sides by 275. So what is 175 divided by 2.75? So 63.63 repeating. 63.63 repeating equals n. So what does that mean? Well, if n is 63, and we can do it, right, 175 minus 275 times 63, what happens? And what happens when n is 64? Because we can't have a, a fraction of a week. Let's just look at these two cases right here. Um, in these two cases, 175 minus 2.75 times 63 we get a dollar seventy-five left on the card, right? So here, one seventy-five minus two seventy-five times sixty-three, right? Here, um, we show a dollar seventy-five left on the card. 
But unfortunately, every movie costs 275. So if we go another week, all right, 275. Oops, 275 times 64. She has a negative balance, negative one. So that means she can go for 63 weeks, right? But on the 64th week, it's going to cost her some money. So the answer is, at 63 weeks in a row, she can go 63 weeks in a row before she has to start paying for these movies right here. Um, you could have also used inequalities to solve this. I find I want to equal zero and then interpreted that statement. We could have also said, um, when does her equation, 175 minus 275 times n, when when does that, um, or, f or for how many, for what n values will that be greater than or equal to zero? So here, if we if we solve that one, we get we add 275 n to both sides. We divide by 275 just like we did before, and then we get this statement. So this would mean when n is less than or equal to 63.63 repeating. In other words, this is, you, know, you can only have you can only have whole weeks. When n is a less than or equal to 63 weeks, right? She'll have money on her card. Uh, she won't have to pay for anything. Any point after that, as soon as n is larger than 63.63, she'll have to start paying. All right, hope that helped.